It's nice to see you again. My name is Michael Williams. In this video, we're going to talk about involuntary body movements. And I realized that in the last video, I said it's going to be short, and it was a regular <laughs> length video. So I don't know how long this one will, will be, but it should be relatively short. Let's hope. Let's talk about involuntary body movements. Now, again, this video is probably more targeted to those of you who struggle with this, right? So it's probably someone who stutters or stammers. If you don't stutter or stammer and you don't struggle with this, um, then that's okay. But there may be people out there who don't stutter or stammer, you don't consider yourself one, but there might be things that you do that you're not aware of, just some involuntary things that you do when you're speaking, and you may not be aware of it, and you may want to become aware of it so that you can stop it. So involuntary body movements, for some people who are severe, can be things like eye blinking. There are times when I still do that, yes. Um, it could be things like lips quivering, right? You, right, your lips start to quiver. Um, there, there have been times where I used to literally bite my tongue. I would bite my tongue and it would start bleeding. So, so now my tongue is bleeding. I'm in pain and I'm not able to say what I'm saying. So now I'm getting doubly frustrated because I'm also in pain. There are people who slap their knees or slap their legs. There are people who stomp their feet. The people who move their arms, there are people who move their heads, right? They move their heads, especially if people are not watching. So there are lots and lots of involuntary, I just got busy that time, lots and lots of involuntary body movements that people do when they're trying to get those words out. And what I want to tell you is that you can stop those things. So if I'm working with someone who has these involuntary body movements, one of the first things we do is we stop that. We cut that off. We just completely cut that off. And this uh, is very much the same. So I'm going to leave these notes up here because it's very much the same as repetitions in terms of how we address it. You have to understand these involuntary body movements are things that you have learned that you have used to assist you in saying what you want to say. Whatever, as crazy as it may look or sound, you, you, you've learned to use these things to get the words out, tapping or whatever it is. And therefore, they are habits and patterns that you can change, right? You can change them. You can replace them with new ones. So I want to give you a couple of, of things that you can do. But before I do that, the first thing that you have to become is aware that you're doing it. Right? You have to become aware that you're doing it. You have to break the pattern by stop. Oh, not going to do it. You have to literally stop yourself from doing it. Now, you change. You, you also change what you do. So you change it or you replace it with something else. So what do you replace it with? Well, for sure you can replace it with nothing, right? Sometimes that's a little more difficult. But one of the things you can replace it with are voluntary body movements or body language. You use your entire body one way or another when you're communicating. And so one of the things we teach in the Pro 90 Smooth Speech System is the use of facial expressions, right? Smiling, including smiling, raising your eyebrows, frowning, right? If you're really trying to make a point, you're really excited about something like I'm doing now, smiling, uh, head nodding and tilting, right? Using your head, okay? Hand gestures, big one. It's a big one. I've had so many clients, so many students tell me that when they learn to use their hands the way that they wanted to voluntarily, that it helped their speech so much. So think of your hands like the wand that someone who directs an orchestra uses, right? A conductor. So think of your hands as helping you to conduct your speech, to help you speak in a more fluid and rhythmic way to help you get those words out. So you use hand gestures. You move your body when you can, right? If you're standing, you can walk. Um, also your posture. When you sit up and your back is squared, this is a posture of confidence. You project confidence. You actually feel more confident and therefore you will speak more confidently and more smoothly. And there's been some studies done on the, the posture that you have, that you use when you're speaking, even if you're sitting. You want to try to sit up. It's 
especially if you're in a meeting and you need to speak well. If you're on a call, you want to try to do it hands-free. Okay, So using your body in a voluntary way, in a deliberate way, can help you override and replace those involuntary body movements. I hope that that makes sense. All right. So first thing that you want to do is you want to understand, you want to become aware of what you're doing, that you're doing it, right? That you're doing it and what you're doing. Then you want to break that pattern to stop it, right? Boom, stop. Not going to do that. Not going to do that. And then you change it. You replace it. So you don't just say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You say, okay, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to start doing that. Stop doing this. I'm going to start doing that. So instead of you know, like I'm going to use my, I'm going to use good body language, effective body language to help me communicate and to help me get my body involved in my speech. It also helps you to communicate in a way that impacts and engages people. No one wants to really look at someone who's just standing here. If I were to just stand here and speak like this the whole time, you probably wouldn't be watching. Or no expression, no body movement. I'm just standing here speaking like this. So you want to get your entire body involved in the process. And I teach, I've been teaching people this for almost a decade or more now, and it really, really works. So if you want to learn more, you want to learn how to do this, and you want to learn how to practice this, I mean, just telling you is not enough. You have to know how to practice it. We incorporate it in a holistic, systematic process that you get with a daily routine. This is what I need to do every single day. So I need to do inside the Pro 90D Smooth Speech System. Just click any of the links that are in the video or around the video or go to Pro90D.com and enroll in that system today so you can transform your life and your speech. This isn't something that you need to be stuck with, that you need to be doing. No matter what you've tried in the past, I've had people that have tried just about everything, hypnosis, They've tried three-day programs, 12-day programs. Some of them have tried my program. They tried it, but they didn't really commit and believe that it was going to work. you got to believe this is going to work or else you're going to filter in. You're going to filter in the failures, right? So you're going to start seeing, oh, this isn't working. I've been working on this, and it's just not working. Or you can filter in the successes. Oh, wow, look at this. This is really working. It's a small success, but it's working. And you get motivated. You get more motivated and you feel more confident. My clients and students tell me one of the first things that happens to them when they start the program within the first week, two weeks, three weeks, they feel more confident, they feel more hopeful, they stick with the program, they start getting results. You can do the same thing. You can transform your life so that you can take advantage of more professional and social opportunities. Do the things you've always wanted to do. Be able to say the things that you've always wanted to say. You can do that by first taking the step and getting into the program because it works. Thank you so much. My name is Michael Williams. I look forward to seeing you inside the program.